So Professor Ken has been making progress on his uh, Ethernet uh, device here. And it's probably because you have the, the Google lab coat on, so it works better when you have that. And that's the uh, Ethernet interface in question. I think it has gotten more hairy. <laughs> really all this board is doing is converting between the 3.3 volts used by the BeagleBone and the 5 volts used by the Alto. Right. So you're sending packets? So I will start the, the echo user which will send echo requests onto the ethernet. And uh, those are all those rules blobs as you he doesn't write anything oh yeah I see it so yeah it's sending packets right right there and then your little board back there is able to receive it okay I'm quite impressed uh, there you go 141 packets I see it 48 so, so here you can see the hexadecimal values of the, the data in the packet um, the ether packets are getting received, but when I try to send a response, the alter doesn't get it. All right, so that's the well. We have half of the problem solved, so let's solve the other half. So now Ken is trying the other direction and uh, trying to send packets that from his device for the alter to receive, and you can see it receives nothing. Uh, successes equal zero, all failures. So somehow the Alto is not receiving the packets and we're sending broadcast packets so need to figure out why it's not coming through we're back probing on, on the card so we extended the uh, Ethernet card and uh, looking at the signal that the Alto thinks it received or is actually receiving the logic uh, so can what are those traces so the red trace on top is the raw data received from the BeagleBone by the Alto. It's Manchester encoded. Um, the Alto, the Alto's Ethernet board extracts the, the data bits out of this, and each blue pulse indicates one word has been received. So what we notice is that it gives up after a couple, two or three words. Um, it sometimes longer. The data screen looks right and then the card gives up. It decides it doesn't want to read anymore. If we try it again, now it gives up after three words. This time two words. It's kind of unpredictable how far it gets before it gives up. Here we got four words. Yeah. And the data so that, that, that could be correct. just task timing before it decides it's over. Uh, so our, our guess, um, both can I think the, the the Alto is not recognizing the address properly somehow. Uh, maybe a fault in the circuits or we don't know. Uh, so the next step would be to look at the microcode that does the address match and see if that matches, right? Uh, okay, can go for it. Send your packets. Okay, the Alto is sending packets. The BeagleBone is sending responses. Okay, so I'm... Um, so we're watching just the Ethernet task. There you go, right there. So it's task seven. All right, so it seems that we have the answer right there. And the address it sees is this one. All right, so it sees FF. And 43 right below is the address that it wants to see. That's the... Yeah. The Alto's Ethernet address. All right. We, we, we should mention that it's a one byte Ethernet address. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> no more than 256 uh, things on the web. So the, the, it, it, should, it, it should see zero, 00, right? Right. So FF is bad. It, so it looks inverted. It, it does look inverted. And uh, we tried inverted it before, that didn't work. So I, I tried sending FF, which no. would be inverted to zero zero broadcast, and that didn't help. Didn't so, work. so it's not just, you know, it's not just the the, ad, the address here is inverted. So we are at least inverted, and maybe more. I need to capture this. Got it. 
All right. Okay. So uh, Ken has tried to is tried sending zero one addresses now, and it's seeing F D. So we're just inverting the value. Zero one should turn into F E. Right. You expect F E. So there is more than inversion happening. So Ken thinks he has figured out what's happening and uh, this gives me an excuse to show off my uh, vintage HP 16C programmer's calculator. So we're sending 01, uh, which of course in binary is the same as 1, and uh, if it were simply inverted, uh, that, would be, that would do this, right, and that would be Fe, but we're not seeing Fe. Instead, I uh, can believe it's shifted one place to the right. Oop, to the left. Crap. It's wrong. There we go. Uh, which would explain what we see, because that would be Fd. And there's actually a hardware explanation for that. Okay, we can zoom in on the start of the packet here. And if you look at the alignment between the incoming signal and the decoded data, um, we can put a cursor there, and you'll notice that it's starting to decode too late. It's starting its decoding on the up edge, but the signal starts with the down edge. So this gives us both the inversion and the one-bit shift. Right, so it was expecting an, an up edge, and we give it the wrong edge. So right. it, it's, it's both screwed up in polarity and it skipped a bit. That, that would be so unusual because the alto is sending on one polarity and receiving on another one. The, the, the signal exactly matches the signal the alto is sending to us. We're sending the same polarity back, but the alto doesn't like it. That's uh, okay. Well, that uh, was hard to anticipate. So, uh, Dr. Ken thinks he can explain why the polarity is inverted in send and receive uh, it's because we are not using transceiver, right? So on the real um, alto ethernet the alto is connected to this transceiver box which generates the signals that go through the ethernet coaxial cable. Right, and on the coaxial cable you would expect the send and receive polarity, it has to be the same, right? Yeah, it has to be the same signal because all the machines are receiving it. Right. Um, but inside the transceiver there's magnetics, there are transformers that, that um, isolate the signal from what goes into the alto, and apparently at that level there's an inversion happening, so what goes into the transceiver is opposite polarity of what comes out of the transceiver. It looks like all the packets are always decoded right. Okay, it looks like we have figured the Ethernet out. Uh, so Ken is now running an echo sequence and you can see it on the scope unfolding. Here's the echo request and here's the response. So if I blow it up, that's uh, what the packet the Alto is sending to Ken's contraption, uh, which uh, mimics another node and later on it responds with uh, uh, its own packet, the echo packet and you can see Ken's uh, uh, contraption doing the transmission happily and the alto is just uh, equally happy here reporting uh, mostly echo successes so we have a working 3 megabit Ethernet network. Okay, so the Alto now is uh, fully up, so it's time to bring it off live support and reassemble it. And these are all the wires that were connected from the analyzer to the Alto. Almost all. Almost all. have one more over there. Well, we did, we did quite a few. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that much.
But <laughs> so let me move it all this way. Alright. Alright. He's got his heart back in. Looks better. Power test. It's all okay, reassembled. Ready? So it should turn on white. There we go. Oh, I was worried for a second. Alright, okay. Okay, well I think it's done guys. You want to strike up a game? <laughs> pinball. Good pinball. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know the one when we move Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if that one's not on right, we get that problem. Can, can, can you do mat can you do mat test? Oh, you need this. Okay. It Jump prom. He passes this. Error, 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 error. What's the error? I think it's that thing again. We're switching it up to, to the which mm -hmm. RAM bank. Well, it looks like a different error from before. Jump prom error. Try to jump to 37. In RAM 0, I, I arrive at. So, so it looks like it's. Off, off by, by four ye. Okay, connector problem most likely. It has to be a, a CRAM board problem. Yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, if there's like one line. That's right, one line that didn't contact. Mm -hmm. There you go. We fix it. I think we did. Okay, you want to try a uh, pinball? Ah, all right. Congratulations, good fix. <laughs> now we still have to close it and still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now we have to close it and make sure it will still work. So here we go, the Alto is officially off life support. We disconnected the logic analyzer and uh, put it all back together. And after a little scare, it uh, rebooted fine. 
So we're essentially done with this hardware. Uh, we still have some work to do on our own stuff. Um, we want to uh, now implement protocols on the Ethernet tool that Ken was doing. And then we need also to finish the disk emulator so we can write our own disks. Uh, in particular, so we can test some of the software we haven't been able to run yet. Uh, and in particular, uh, Smalltalk, which has the windowing environment and it is very impressive. Other than that, you know, we hope to find some uh, sister altos to hook it up and to in a network, and that's ongoing. And also, we will uh, start showing it around. The first event uh, should be uh, VCF West, the uh, uh, Vintage Computer Festival, uh, this summer in August at the Computer History Museum. So hopefully, see you there.